well, it, um, being 6.30, we'll uh, call this meeting of the Community Preservation Committee to order. Um, our first order of business this evening is the approval of the October 6th uh, minutes. Do we have a motion? So moved. And do we have a second? Second motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any um, questions or discussion on the minutes? Yeah, what's this? All right, hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Um, our next uh, item of business is a um, CPA application from Girls Inc. for uh, the property at 228 Worthen Street. Girls Inc. of Lowell has applied to the Community Preservation Committee seeking $250,000 uh, of CPA funding for a historic preservation project. The applicant is seeking to make improvements to the historic structure at 228 Worthen Street. Uh, and we do have a, someone here to speak uh, in favor or about this application. I just want to um, set your expectations that what we are doing this evening is um, gathering information. We're, we'll hear from you. The members may have some questions about your application, but uh, the committee will not be deliberating uh, on the application this <coughs> evening. We will actually do that in January. We will evaluate all the applications and make our recommendations in January. But with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening. My name is Bopa Malone. I'm the Executive Director of Girls Incorporated of Greater Lowell. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you all for taking your time to um, review our application. And I also want to say a special thank you to Dylan Ricker um, for his five-star service in providing um, information and guidance about this process in a timely manner to us. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity to come before you to share a bit about our important work, our Connect Stronger Together expansion, and why it's crucial for you and your committee to be a partner in this um, effort. Girls Inc. of Greater Lowell has been in existence since 1917. We've always been a part of the downtown Worthen Street historic, uh, Historical District located at 10, uh, 220 Worthen Street. Worthen Street holds significance in its history to Lowell, and similarly, so does Girls Inc. of Greater Lowell. Our site is one of the six founding affiliates to the Girls Inc. National Program. Our programming has evolved for over the past 100 years, but we've consistently stayed true to our mission of inspiring girls to be strong, smart, and bold. I'm an alum of Girls Inc. and I'm a product of what good mentorship and resources can do to a girl. From a war-torn country with trauma to a woman who has, you know, gotten different opportunities and be able to give back to her community. I really wouldn't be where I am today <laughs> if, it was, if it wasn't for Girls Inc. love, guidance, and support. And I'm honored to come full circle to serve as their ED and stand here in front of you tonight to advocate for this special organization to be able to expand and to continue to help a new generation of local girls in Lowell to become stronger, smarter, and bolder, especially at a time where mental health is one of the number one issues here in the greater Lowell community, according to the Lowell Health Alliance Community Health Needs Assessment. Back in 2020, we had the unique opportunity to acquire 228 Worthen Street, which is historically known as Mission Hills Educational Club, and more recently, the Greek American Legion. And so we jumped at this wonderful opportunity. Since August to the 2021, we've been working closely with the historical board to rehabilitate and restore 228 Worthen Street, adding a narrow link um, structure that would connect um, that building to our existing building at 220, which helps to preserve the historic character of the street while combining the three buildings into a single campus function. This renovation will include new landscaping, which would mimic the Whistler House um, garden at a smaller scale and help preserve the historical character of the street. We're in the middle of a capital campaign to raise funds to get into the space and help hundreds more girls to secure a home for years to come. And I'm here to ask you and your committee 
to consider being a part of this important initiative and to, make it, uh, to help make a difference in the lives of our local girls. For the, um, for the preservation of the significant early survival, uh, surviving Greek revival structure in downtown, it will cost us 1500000 and we've raised $1,050,000 um, already. We love to be able to get into the space by March 2023, which is our timeline. Um, and with 450000 to go, we ask that you consider contributing 250000 to be used to upgrade the exterior and return it to a more um, historically accurate version of itself, including roofing, windows, um, door siding, and landscaping. If awarded, CPC funds will greatly assist in the preservation of this significant Greek revival structure which is considered the first truly American style of architecture. Again, I want to thank you for um, your good work and for taking your time to review this application. I know that we're applying out of your cycle, so I hope that you would consider um, making an exception to allow us to do so, and I hope you um, would view this favorably. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, turn it over to the members. Anyone have any questions of the applicant? Sure. No. No. Hearing none. Um, I think we're probably in good shape then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time. It's nice to meet, um, see some of you that I've already known and um, meet some of you as well. I appreciate your time. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, um, our next order of business this evening is the First United Baptist Church, uh, which was one of the projects that uh, received funding in last year's round. Um, they have um, a petition to be on the agenda to discuss the preservation restriction associated with that grant. So, Mr. Conner. Thank you, Ms. Thank you Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, I'm Stephen Conant. I live at um, 34 Barrisford Avenue in Lowell. I'm a lifelong member and fourth generation member of the First United Baptist Church. And um, we are very, very thrilled that you um, gave us a, um, a grant to restore the, the bell. Our church is the um, oldest church in the city. It was built in 1826. And in 1827, there was a Paul Revere bell placed in the bell tower of that facility. And you were generous enough to provide us with a $12,000 grant for the restoration of that bell. And we are very, very happy to have that in place. What I'm here tonight to uh, discuss, though, is um, is there was a, a little bit of confusion, and we're still we're, basically I'm looking for some guidance from the committee. Um, when my um, colleague uh, Sharon uh, Hardy came and did the presentation, we, was told at the meeting at that point that the preservation restriction that I understand goes with the with the grant would apply just to the bell itself. And that was our understanding going forward. And the letter that indicated, and I think I provided all this through, through Dylan, who's been terrific in helping along in an email to try to sort of track the, um, the uh, correspondence related to this. The grant itself, the letter actually indicated it was on the building, uh, on the property. And Sharon immediately got back to, uh, it was, um, I believe the woman at the time who it was with, um, uh, Serena uh, Gonzalez, um, indicating that it was her understanding that it was simply on the bell itself, was told by Serena that yes, that's the case, it was an error, that it was the restriction just applied to the bell, and there was correspondence between um, them going back and forth, again, confirming that that was the case. Um, when I went down to um, execute the agreement, Attached to it was uh, a full preservation restriction that applies to the whole property. And for a $12,000 grant, extremely generous and extremely helpful to put our whole property under that conservation uh, restriction, preservation restriction was just a little too much. I mean, it's, it's a, a place in which is why Sharon brought it up in the initial meeting. Um, and so we're just really looking for some direction between this committee, the law department, and what it is we need to do in order to secure the grant. So thank you for your consideration tonight. 
Um, thank you for that. Um, it's my understanding that <clears throat> the staff um, has been has reached out to the law department looking for an opinion about um, that might be uh, germane to this. Have we received any response from the law department yet? Uh, we've not received a response from the law department yet. Okay. It's my understanding that the issue um, that we're looking for some clarity on is that the entities that actually hold the preservation restrictions on behalf of community preservation committees have their own requirements about what those restrictions must or must not entail. And uh, we, I think we're waiting for clarity about whether that translates to requirements that have to be applied in this case or not. Uh, if we have the flexibility, we can then entertain clarity about what the uh, intent of the committee was or, or may be now. But until we get that, that um, uh, understanding of what our limits on our authority actually are, uh, we probably can't give you a definitive response this evening. So hopefully we'll receive that in the coming weeks and perhaps in the, at some point in the new year we'll be yeah. able to provide a clearer response so, to you. So from, from my clarity, um, the city moved ahead, in which I think is a terrific program, the <coughs> Preservation Act, and took advantage of that. So, and I didn't see the actual wording or, or the legislation that goes into it. So is it or is it unclear, Adam, as to, Mr. Chairman, as to your understanding whether when you provide a grant that as a, as a result of the enabling legislation that it also has to have a recorded preservation restriction on the entire property that that goes with? Is that the original intent and is that how it's written within the, uh, yeah. w w within the uh, bylaw or the... Our understanding at this point, and again, we're looking for some additional guidance here, but our understanding at this point is that when this program funds a historic preservation project, mm -hmm. which is the case with the, the Bell Project that, that we're talking about this evening, uh, we are required that a, it is a requirement that a preservation restriction be placed mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with that grant. What is not clear to us at the moment, and we are looking for some clarity on, is whether we have any latitude about whether that can be partial or if it must be on the entire building. Okay. We don't know the answer we to that question that. yet. Okay. The secondary question, if it turns out we have latitude, will be for the board to decide whether it's comfortable with a more limited restriction that you're requesting or not. Okay. But at this point, we don't even know if we have that latitude. Okay. So we need to find that out first. And then the next step after that will be, um, well, either we'll be restricted or we won't be. And we'll. Okay. Well, if I could offer in um, theoretical, um, the program itself um, for our property, I, I mean, I think the intent overall is to preserve as much as possible. In our case, it's a very historic bell mm -hmm. in, a, in a property that's on the register of historic places mm -hmm. within a historic district. Anything we do to that building in and of itself, regardless of whether there's a preservation restriction on the whole property, is subject to some review by the historic board just as a matter of course because of its location because of its listing on the national register etc so mm -hmm. the building and property itself in effect are are protected um, the other thing i would offer is it's i mean i've seen some some of the larger amounts i was involved when the spalding house restoration we received funding from mass historic commission mm -hmm. for a hundred thousand dollar restoration the city participated in that i think the total grant was fifty plus thousand dollars Part of that, and that was for the full restoration of the exterior of that building, and the <coughs> preservation restricted placed on that property. I think it was, it was a certainly um, justified to put it on for the, for that amount. Um, for the twelve thousand dollars, I think if the intent is to preserve as much as possible, if you start putting it on a whole property, for those relatively smaller amounts it may limit the number of folks who actually can take advantage of the program maybe in the end um be not as um, um do as much as you'd like it to do so i would encourage you um when we have the chance to discuss hopefully if you have some flexibility to take that into consideration um the bell is um i mean i've been up there it's we can still ring it because it has a uh, um i forget what the term is but um uh, it's a beautiful sounding bell and, and uh, has rung for hundreds, of, it'll be 200 years in, in really soon. So I thank you for your consideration. Thank you for the grant. And I hope there's some flexibility that we can find within the, within the program itself to make that happen. Great. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Have a good night.
All right, um, our next uh, order of business this evening is the 2023 meeting schedule. Um, there were copies placed on each of the tables. Um, this was also circulated in advance to the members via email. Um, I think we're looking for a motion to approve the schedule. Member Boutenheis, do we have a second? Aye. All right, Member DePesa. <coughs> Any <coughs> questions, comments, discussion on the schedule? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yep, Member Shea. I'd like the record to indicate that on Thursday, March 23rd, uh, I will be not attending that meeting. I'll be elsewhere during the month of March. Okay. Would you, um, we can sort this out a little bit, but we could, uh, since we're establishing the schedule, would you prefer that we set our annual uh, public hearing for the 25th so you can attend the May 25th date? Are we looking at the same things? Yeah. yeah, we have a. I'm looking at the ten of the schedule for meeting. Sorry, the, yeah, the, the carrot. The little carrot there. The reason the March 23rd date is significant is that that's the date we are scheduled to have our annual public hearing. That's the date you plan on having a meeting. But not just a meeting, public but hearing, but the okay. once a year we are required. Just to make a note. I won't be here. Solicit public input, and I'm asking if you'd like to be part of that. In which case, we could schedule the public hearing for a different meeting. I'm leaving the first of the month. I don't come back into April. Well, our next meeting won't be till May. Say that again. <laughs> would you? The question is, would you like to be part of the public hearing, the annual public hearing, or do you not mind missing it? We can re we can reschedule the public hearing to the May meeting. Keep the March meeting, but do the public hearing in May on the 25th. Okay. If you'd like to be here. If you don't care, then we can do it in March. No. First of all, I don't want to cause. <laughs> I'm causing too much conversation. I, I just want to point out on, on the meeting schedule for March okay. 23rd, I'm not going to be here. That's okay. it's okay. probably as simple cool. as that. At least right. to me, it's simple. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comments or discussion on the schedule? Yes. All right. I guess uh, do we need a roll call on this one, or is a voice vote fine? We can do a roll call. Okay. Chairman Bakey. Uh, yes. Member Fuller. Yes. Member Butenheis. Yes. Member Shea. Yes. Member DePeza? Yes. Member Rourke? Yes. Member Gallivan? Yes. All right. And <clears throat> our um, final order of business this evening is the election of officers for 2023. Um, I think we have just the two officer positions, right? We have a chair and a vice chair. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. I guess, do we have any nominations for the chair position? Can I nominate our existing uh, officers to remain in their positions? Um, maybe not, actually. Um, I, I, don't, I don't mind accepting a nomination to be chair again, but the current vice chair is actually um, Fran. And because of a shift in city staffing, she was here as in an ex officio capacity, and now Dave is taking that seat. So you'll have to convince right. Dave to want to be <laughs> vice chair if you uh, want to do that. I, sorry, I didn't realize <laughs> that that wasn't just for tonight. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, let's start by nominating uh, Chairman Bakey as to remain as chairman. Second. Any discussion? Do we have a contest here? Any other candidates? I guess we need a voice vote on that or a roll call on that. Sorry. Chairman Bakey. I'm going to abstain since it's on me. Okay. Member uh, Fuller. Yes. yes. Member Butenice. Yes. Member Shea. Yes. Member DePeza. Yes. Member Rourke? Yes. And uh, Member Gallivan? Yes. <clears throat> well, thank you all. Um, so now we need a nomination for a vice chair. What do you say, Mr. Fuller? Are you interested? We've historically had a, uh, a member of city staff as our vice chair. I'm sure it's something you're aware of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. It, it, has, it has actually been very helpful to have this. That's for fine. Vice chair. I'd be happy to so. I guess, do we have a second on that nomination? Yeah, thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Any, um, anyone else want to throw their hat in that ring? All right. Hearing, hearing none, I guess we need a roll call on confirming Member Fuller as the vice chair. Chairman Bakey. Yes. Member Fuller. I'll abstain. Member Butenheis. Yes. Member Shea. Yes. Member DePeza. Yes. Member Rourke. Yes. Member Gallivan. Yes. All right. Thank you all. Um, do we have any other notices, comments, or other business? 
to any members? Hearing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second? Second. I assume all are in favor. Thank you all, and I uh, hope you have a great holiday season. <laughs>